All right, welcome back everyone. Now let's finish making our spiral staircase. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have this connector piece, which is the original. I'm going to press H on the keyboard to hide it. And then I would like to make a handrail for a staircase and we need to match the curvature of our staircase. So we're going to use one of Maya's curve tools to help us create it. So go up to your create tab. Down here, you have your curve tools. We're going to use the EP curve tool. EP stands for edit points. And the points we laid down are the actual points on the curve. So that'll help us match this curvature. So we're going to snap points to the top of these connector pieces. So you'll want to get pretty close to, for this. Uh, you'll hold down V on the keyboard, click, it'll lay down a point. Um, because if you don't get close enough, it just will connect to the closest vertex. So we want to get pretty close and start plotting down points. You'll be able to see your curve after the second point. And if you lay down a point you don't want, just press delete to delete your last point. If you press escape or try and undo it with control Z, you'll have to start over. So just make your way around the mesh and start laying down points. There we go. And the nice thing about this process is that you'll get a very precise curve uh, by the end that will match that staircase. Uh, when you're done, just press enter on the keyboard to complete your curve. There you go, there's my last point. And now I'm gonna press enter, and there's my, cur my curve. So what we'll wanna do next is we'll wanna move our curve up so that it feels like a good height for the staircase. Now, um, this is the end of the curve, so we'll wanna move it up about five to six steps. So let's go into the side view or the front view. So maybe I'll go into maybe the side view over here. And then um, I'm going to just move this curve and what we'll do is we'll press four on the keyboard to go into wireframe mode for a second. And I wanna move it one, two, three, four, five, five to five and a half, it's probably good for my staircase. Um, it really depends on um, the distance between your stairs, right? The size of your staircase as well. All right, so I have that right there. And what I would like to do next is I would like to extrude some geometry along this curve. And um, I'm in Maya 2022, which gives me access to the Sweep Mesh Creator which makes it very convenient to do that. But if you're on a previous version of Maya, I do have a tutorial on how to extrude along a curve and I'll post the link down below. All right, so now I have this curve, I'm gonna um, either go to the Create tab and choose Sweep Mesh, or I can go over here and click this icon as well. And just like that, I have some polygons along this curve. That's perfect. I'm going to uh, click this Cap button, um, sorry, toggle that on so that it closes that up. And then I just want to play with the scale profile a little bit to get that diameter I want. So I'm going to go with, actually that looks pretty good. So I'll probably go with this. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. And now what I want to do is open up the outliner and I want to create a second one. So I'm going to cl click this sweep mesh that has been created. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to rename this the top rail. So duplicating it will disconnect it from the curve. So um, changing the curve now won't affect this. And we'll select the curve and we'll move this one down. And for this one, I wanna go back to that sweet mesh creator and I'm gonna lower its profile and make it a little bit thinner. So, so I'll probably make it like, you know, probably 0.12ish for me. And if we want, we can duplicate again and create another one. So first I'll select the curve, maybe move this up a little bit. Right. I'll place right there. We can move more later, um, but I'll take the sweep mesh and I'll control D to duplicate it. And now I have another one and I can move this down and we have a second one. So I, look, I think that looks pretty nice. Um, I'll take probably both of them and just move these up a little bit. There we go. Oops, I moved both of them offset. Um, I'm going to actually move the curve itself first and then I'll move this one. So. It was getting a little bit confused, selecting both the curve and the sweep at the same time. Right, so I think there is fine for now. Um, what I would like to do next is extrude out some geometry al along the top of our connector that will be our balusters. So let's do that next. Let's bring back our connector. And what we'll do is we'll just center the pivot on it. 
There you go. And we'll move it a little bit closer. And then let's go into a face selection. And I'm going to hold down the tab key to enable drag select. I'll grab these top faces. There we go. And then um, let's offset it and then extrude it up. So first, um, I'm going to extrude it with an offset. To about here is fine. I think right there is good. And then I'll press G to repeat. And I can move this up to about right here. Right, I think that looks pretty good right there. What, oh, actually, no, we need to go higher. So right about here. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna do another offset and extrude it up. So let's press, let me check that height. Maybe a bit higher, right there for me. And then I'll press G to repeat again. We'll create another offset. So over here, I'm gonna make this one, about that for the diameter. And then I'll press G to repeat, and I'll move this up one more time, and this will be like another connect, um, connecting piece. All right, just checking here. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then over here, we just want to make sure that it's inside here. And there we go. All right, so now while those faces are still selected, let's delete them. And then um, what we can do is we can hide our original connector piece again. So select it, press H on the keyboard to hide it. Um, if we take a look at the uh, rail here, at the end here, I would like to extrude that section out a little bit. So let's select it. I'm gonna go into face selection, select this, and let's extrude that out. So extrude, we'll click and drag this arrow out a little bit. And I'm gonna bring it out just to about right there is probably good, uh, maybe a bit less. And then while I have this selected, we might as well retopologize this. So I'll grab the multi-cut tool and I'll turn it back to quads. Keep it nice and clean. And there we go. And then let's go into edge mode. I wanna grab these edges and just soften them. So, so grabbing, grabbing those edges, right? And then we'll use that marking menu. So hold down shift and the right mouse button. And we'll go soften, harden and soften. There we go. And now let's do the same for the top section. So going into face mode, select that face. And then let's extrude it. And I'm gonna bring it out to about right here as well. And then let's uh, retopologize that. So grab the multi-cut tool. And connect to here. All right, and then let's soften those edges as well. I'm gonna go into edge mode, select this one, hold down shift, double click that one, and do a soften harden and a soften. All right, I think that looks a lot better. And then what I'd like to do next is, um, I'm done with these um, balusters, right? So what we can do is uh, we can delete the history and maybe adjust the bottom a little bit. And then we can create that little trim that will go along the outside of our steps. So let me just take a look here. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna select this and let's go into either the front or the side view. So we'll go over here. And what I'll do is I'll um, go into wireframe mode for a second, or it might be a bit easier to turn on our template. So let's, um, yeah, let's open up our channel box. We'll make this a template. There we go. And then um, what I'll do is I'll go into this and, oops, wrong button. I'll turn on wireframe unshaded. I'll go into vertex selection and I'll move these vertices up over here a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to grab these ones and snap it to over here. And as a template, actually, I realize it won't snap. So we'll make it back to a regular uh, layer. And I'll hold down V on the keyboard, click and drag, and then hover my mouse to the vertex I want to align to, which is that one. And then I'll grab these ones and just move these down. All right, I think that looks a lot better. All right, let's go back to our perspective view. And now let's create that outside trim section. So to do that, we'll use our curve to do it. And our sweep mesh is still connected to it. So let's just select these, make sure that the history is deleted on them. And then we'll select our curve and let's offset it so it's sitting outside our mesh. So to do that, we'll go into the top view. So what I'll do is I'll go into here and um, let's turn off the grid. And so if we turn on wireframe mode, we can see our curve. And what I would like to do is create an offset 
So let's um, go up here to the curves and surfaces shelf and click the offset button. We'll hide the original curve. And with the offset uh, curve, what we'll do is we'll open up the attribute editor and we have an offset curve uh, node over here and we can adjust this distance. But you can see that as I drag this, it starts uh, pinching on this end, right? And so what we need to do is click this box and use that given normal. And we'll basically come in to here and um, adjust that distance. So I'm probably gonna go pretty close into here and just play with this distance, just sitting on the outside of that, that, those steps. And for me, I'm using this value. All right, so yours will probably be a little bit different. And now let's go back to our perspective view and I'm gonna select the new offset curve that we have, move it down a little bit. And I wanna move it so that the end of this curve is sitting a little bit above that step, right? We can adjust in a second more, um, sorry, more in a second. And I'm gonna make a duplicate of that. So Control D to duplicate it and move a second one below that step, right? So it's looking a little bit like that. And don't worry if it's um, a little bit on the inside, we can still adjust it more later on as well. Um, but for now, what I would like to do is I would like to select both of these, right? And I would like to loft it. So up here, we have a loft button, right? Click on this and you'll get a new piece of uh, geometry, right? It's a basically a NURBS surface. And what we can do with this is um, we can select any of the curves. So say the top one and we can move it and adjust the distance we want. So let's take a look. I think that looks pretty nice. I'd like to move the bottom one a little bit lower maybe on mine, right? So I think that looks pretty good. Maybe the top one just up a little bit as well. So I have this for my trim. And then what we can do is uh, we can just, um, right now it looks a little bit funny, but we're about to extrude it anyways, right? So probably don't want to adjust it too much, but if you want, you could go into your lofted surface, uh, go into its control vertices and move them. But I'll leave mine alone. Uh, what, I'm, what I want to do though is convert it to polygons. So let's select the lofted surface and let's um, convert it to polygon. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll go up to the modify tab. Um, down here, you have your con conversion options and we're gonna go nerves to polygons. Open up that option box. I'm just gonna reset this and we wanna change it to control points. There we go and click tessellate. Right, so now we have a polygon surface. That's awesome and what we can do is um, before we extrude it, let's smooth it one level. So select it. We're going to hold on shift and the right mouse button. And I'm going to choose smooth. And there you go. That's looking a lot smoother. You might want to go another level, but I think that's fine for me. And then I'm going to select it and I'm going to isolate it for a second. Um, before we extrude this, we can even get rid of some of these edges. We don't really need all of them. So I'm going to go into edge mode and actually, actually I'm going to get rid of maybe these ones over here. And then I hold down control and press delete. There we go. And now let's extrude this. Let's go exit isolation view for a second. And now let's extrude this. So I'm gonna extrude and give it a bit of thickness. It's probably to here. There we go. And I think that feels pretty good. You can see all these steps are fine. The bottom one, it can come out a little bit, but I just wanna get the thickness I want first. So for my trim, I'll probably go with, um, something like that or even a little bit less there we go and then uh, let's select that lofted surface because that polygon mesh is still connected to it so we can go actually into its control vertices uh press four and set uh to go into wireframe and we can grab some of these right and we can move it out just a little bit so it's away from that step if we want so just click and drag or from here right just a little bit all right there we go just like that. And then once you're done, just select the mesh, the new mesh, and delete that history so that um, we can get rid of those. But let's take a look at everything first. And then we can delete the history on all of those. So right now, this is what we have for our staircase. And I think that looks pretty good. What I'll do is I'll select everything. But to do that, let's open up our channel box, make sure that it's a regular layer so we can select everything. And I'll do a box select of everything. And I'm going to go up to the poly modeling shelf and click delete history. There we go. And now we can actually go into here. We can, if we want, get rid of our original steps, our connector, I'll leave those, but I can get rid of the curves now. I can get rid of the lofted surface and I can even get rid of the mesh networks. And there you go. 
Let's select everything, let's take a look. So if we want, we can combine it into one object, but I'll leave it the way it is. And this is our spiral staircase. And it didn't take us too much time, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and you can use the techniques to make your own spiral staircase. Uh, let's wrap up this tutorial and uh, thanks for checking out. We'll see you in the next one. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.